usually use this for like knocking down excess powder on my face because I do tend to prefer applying a, like applying powder to my face with either a like a brain fart. Um, <laughs> and dolls welcome back it's me Cora I am so excited to share with you today's video I have so many favorites for the month of November it's going to be a long video so you might want to pause go get a snack hang out with me for a little while because I have so many beauty products to talk about and I am so excited about all of them this is one of those months where I'd like reel myself back and just go okay you're done like normally there's months where I'm like okay well what else can I include with this video? Or sometimes I feel like I don't have enough favorites, but this is one of those months where I was like, dude, you're done. You cannot include any more products. And I might even have to cut some from this video because if it's longer than a half an hour, I just don't think I can handle it. It's so many amazing opportunities this month. Uh, in the early part of November, I got to be a judge for the Glam Top 100 Beauty Awards, which was amazing. Just to be selected, I felt so honored. Um, it was so much fun to try out all those beauty products, and something they didn't tell me before I went there to judge is that I got to keep the beauty products. I didn't know that. Maybe I'm naive. Um, so that was just like kind of mind exploding with the massive massive haul and I've shown this this haulage of products on my Instagram a couple of times because it's just so much stuff and I actually haven't kept it all for myself I, I couldn't if it, even if I wanted to there's just not enough room in my house for that much stuff but it gave me op an opportunity to try out so many beauty products and a really great opportunity to give just tons and tons of stuff away to friends and family which has been really really fun um so if you guys want to see like a haul of what I'm keeping from that, I think that that might make a kind of fun video to show you guys what I am keeping from that huge massive haulage. And I do have some products today that are part of my favorites, which is one of the reasons why I'm mentioning that now. So the first thing I want to share is something that I think you guys are going to be surprised by. Um, and that is the Yes to Tomatoes Clear Skin Concealer. Now, as you guys know, I tried the Yes to Tomatoes Cleanser and I hated it. I mean, I hated it. I reviewed it previously. We won't go into it. It's basically, basically just the smell was disgusting and I could not hang. But, um, because I got this as a freebie, I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and try it. Thankfully, this smells like eucalyptus. It smells clean and not gross in any way, shape, or form. It just smells actually quite nice. Uh, this is a acne concealer. So this actually has 1% salicylic acid in it. So it's really, really great for putting on a blemish. And my skin has been breaking out a lot this month. The weather change was like crazy. Like we went from like hot weather, like literally like 77 degrees to freaking cold pretty much overnight. It's been really great to, you know, stick on a blemish. The texture of it is very silicone based, so it's almost like a th very thick primer kind of feeling, which is actually good for putting f on first and then putting your regular concealer over the top because this isn't like the best concealer in the world and I don't like it for under the eye, but for blemishes and things like that, it's really great. I've actually been keeping this in my bag as well for just sort of like an on the go, like, oh, my zit is starting to poke through, cover that bad boy up. It's been kind of cool. So the next thing I want to share is a set of polishes that I got from Zoya. It's quite a lot here. It's sort of a system of nail polish and it's all called Naked Manicure. So this actually came with a whole bunch of these like slightly tinted ones. I kept the pink one and the purple one, but there was like a beige one, um, like a deep plum type one. And each one of the different colors has like a different effect on the nails. You can buy these individually. You don't have to buy them as a set, but the sort of the manicure set that it comes with is a glossy base, which you put down first, which really is a wonderful base coat. I can say that my nail polish doesn't chip that much when I use this, which is amazing. Finally found a good base coat. Um, and then it has both a glossy seal and a satin seal. So you have the option to have a supernatural nail with this, with the satin one and a very glossy nail with the glossy top, obviously. And then the Naked Manicure, the white one, which is good for painting on the tips. Now, obviously I didn't use it today because I'm all one color nude nails today. You know, Zoya is a brand I've liked for a while. It's nothing that I feel like I need to say like, you guys have to go out and buy it. It's super, super awesome. But if you're looking for a manicure kit, that is a good one to kind of get all the steps of it because they do in fact work. Like some of those like manicure kits, you're like, this is terrible, but that one actually works really, really well. So the next couple things I want to share with you that I got from the Glam Beauty 100 is the Makeup Forever Graphic Liner. Now I had never tried their graphic liner before. It's one of these felt tip liners. It's, you know, nothing, you know, particularly outrageous, but it's very, very, very black. 
it's so freaking black and it's matte it's a really great liner I didn't know how like super super matte black it was until I had tried it and once I did I was like dude so for everyone who's always asking me like what's the most black liquid liner that's matte I think this might be it. I think this is the blackest and the darkest. It's not like hardcore, like matte, matte, matte black, but it's definitely more matte than any of the other liquid eyeliners that I've tried. Speaking of liquid eyeliners, I also, from the Glam 100, got the tattoo liner in Mad Max Brown from Kat Von D. As you guys know, I love the tattoo liners. I just think that they're so great. I love the brush tip. And it's kind of cool to have a brown. Brown is maybe not a color I would have bought, but it's been actually very useful for when I'm wanting to do a little bit more naturalistic makeup. Do a really, really thin line right at the lash line. It really helps to enhance them without looking like makeup-y. I dig it. It's a really cool liner, and I'm glad that I have it in brown. I'm kind of sad that I haven't had a brown eyeliner all this time. Like, I have a brown eyeliner. I just didn't have a liquid. Well, you, you get me. This next item is something that I absolutely adore, and that is the Becca Beach Tint in Fig and Opal. This is such a weird product. It's like a weird, like, like spongy... If I had to describe it, it almost feels a little bit like super wet dough, like doughy, spongy, gel cream blush. It's beautiful. It looks so gorgeous on the skin. It has a nice glow to it without being like overly shimmery and it actually goes well over applied makeup. So that is something that's awesome. Not a lot of cream blushes can be applied over a powdered face this one can. And this is something that I originally tried this at the Beauty 100. It gave me a different shade. It was a beautiful, beautiful peachy color. And I just thought it would work so well for one of my friends. So I said, oh my God, dude, this is amazing. You've got to try this. You got to have this. And I went ahead and picked this one up from Beautylish for myself. Love Hangover from Too Faced. I did sort of like a casual lip and cheek or yeah, cheek blush swatch video with the, uh, a lot of the Too Faced lip and cheek sets. This blush is so gorgeous. I actually am wearing these two today layered. If you're wondering what's on my cheeks, it's both of these. Because I kind of wanted to wear them both and I just couldn't decide. So I was like, let's just invite everyone to the party. So Love Hangover is a really beautiful peach blush. It has a nice glow to it. Um, I love the name. The name, I die. I love that song. And so every time that I'm putting it on, I end up singing it to myself. I'm a weirdo. What are you going to do? My next favorite of the month is a brush that I bought a few months back when I went to the makeup show in San Francisco. And oh my geez, this is amazing. So I I actually bought this in like a little kit. This is a Delium Tools brush. I don't know where the rest of them are. Oh, here's one. So I brought, I bought a brush kit. There was like five of them or something in this kit. And these brushes are good. But this one is my, oh, this is like, this is so good. This is the 762 eyeliner brush, and it's super, super teeny tiny, like itty bitty baby hair. You can draw on hairs with this. It's so fine, and it's little, and it's so freaking good at both eyeliner and eyebrows. Like, this makes me really, like, question my life choices that I've used all these other liner brushes for years because this one is literal perfection. This one is from the Bamboo line, and I wanted to just repurchase a whole bunch more of this purple one because I also really like the color which is like an added bonus, but honestly, I just love it for the function. But you cannot buy this one, the bamboo purple by itself. You can buy the bamboo pink and the bamboo green by itself, but you can't do it with the, oh, and then it fell. All right, well, anyway, I went ahead and got another one in the yellow line. Uh, it's pretty much identical. I used this one for my eyebrows today and it turned out fabulous. By the way, I don't think I mentioned this. I use it with my dip brow which is my other favorite of the month. I use the Dip Brow in Auburn. I originally was mixing the Auburn and the Soft Brown. Sometimes I still do. Kind of mix it up, kind of see what I need that day. Um, but the Auburn Dip Brow, along with the Delium Tools 762, it's like a match made in heaven. This brush is just so good. It's so, so amazing for eyeliner. And I'm just gonna go ahead and transition into my next favorite of the month, which is the ColourPop eyeliners. Holy bejesus. Okay, so first of all, I am the luckiest person in the world because they actually sent me all their eyeliners when they launched. And I'm in total poop because I didn't make a video about it because I just, I, it never fit into my schedule. I never had an opportunity to make a video about them. So I think what I need to do is do like a ColourPop catch up where I just kind of talk about all their launches that have come out and all my favorites because I have so many things that I love from them. It, that, whole makeup line just completely blows my mind. The price point and the quality and the colors, it's so good. So ColourPop, 
gel liners are definitely my jam. I do also really like the pencil liners, but there's more I want to discuss about them maybe when we do the catch-up video. Um, just a couple of colors from them that I've really liked are their eyeshadows. I really like Don't Give a Fuck or DGAF. Uh, this one is like a cool duochrome. It looks like it's going to be um, sort of like orangey red brown in the pan with like a green flash but it goes on a beautiful rosy color i'm wearing it in my outer creasel area to the creasel that's not a thing uh then party girl is one of their matte super shock eyeshadows which are probably my favorite and this one is so fantastic this is like my every like this could be my bay this could be my everyday go-to color it's beautiful all over the lid it gives me such a great smooth the texture uh, for all the other eyeshadows to go on top of, it's amazing. So I definitely highly recommend Party Girl. In fact, if that one's limited edition, I think I need to buy a backup. And then Valley Girl, I also love. Valley Girl is a beautiful, shimmery, they have a lot of colors like this, I'm going to be honest. Um, but it's a beautiful shimmery gold color, which I'm wearing in my inner corner and then also a little bit on my lid today. And then the only other eyeshadow that I'm wearing is Punk from the and we're just going to keep keep the transitioning to the next product punk from the Gwen Stefani palette which you guys know I am mad about I not like mad like mad about you love this palette it's fantastic it's everything I wanted it to be I know a lot of people really didn't like it sorry I love it I think it's fantastic um, one thing I want to clarify um, in my review I feel like I gave the impression that I felt that it would only work on light skins and that's not the case at all a lot of other people's impression of it is that it would only work on light skins um, and my my feeling on that was I have light skin so it's not something that I would find as a negative but I totally think that you can rock this I think it's one of those things like for instance like the naked palettes those are best for maybe like medium skin tones like because they're kind of going for like the average right so they're best for medium that doesn't mean that dark and light skin tones can't use them and make them work do you am i making sense or am i rambling either way i'll shut up uh do love the gwen stefani palette and i do plan on doing a tutorial with this as well as a lip swatch fest for the jeffree star lippies do you like how my little transitions today it's working out well jeffree star velour what are these technically called velour liquid lipsticks these are so good. They're so good. They are my favorite liquid lipstick and I have tried them all. No, I really haven't, but I've tried a lot. I mean, there's like a grillion. I don't think there's anyone out there who's maybe tried every single brand that makes liquid lipstick, but I've tried a lot of them and this is by far my favorite, favorite with that capital T at the end. Go ahead and revisit those in another video later this week. My other favorite liquid lipstick, can you see? You see I have a lot of problems with the liquid lipsticks because they're so good. I just adore them. I kind of resisted getting on the bandwagon for a while. And then once I did, it was like, clear the decks. I need everything. So this one is from ColourPop. This is Teeny Tiny. As you guys know, I kind of gushed about this in my Gwen Stefani um, palette review and tutorial. This color is absolutely gorgeous. Apparently, it's really similar to Chili. So if you already have that from ColourPop, you probably don't need Teeny Tiny. I love this. I'm so, so, so happy with this. And I love the name. I think it's very precious. And then my other favorite actually came, they sent a whole bunch of these like little minis the other day. By the way, so cute. Um, and there was one in here called Clueless, which is currently down in my bag. So I don't have to show you guys, but if you have seen it, any swatches of it, it's been around for a while. It's one of the permanent colors. And it is gorgeous the most beautiful like my lips but better type of light pink it's really gorgeous and fun to wear the next favorite that I have of the month is a body moisturizer um, I had seen a commercial for I think it was the Jergens in shower body lotion and I thought that's such a cool idea so I went to Ulta and they didn't have that one but they did have one from Nivea so I decided Jergens Nivea who cares maybe someone feels passionately about it but I just don't. This is an in-body shower lotion. You put this on while you're in the shower. You don't have to, you've done all your cleansing as sort of your last step and you sort of slather it all on. Not too much because then you'll be like a slip and slide and you might have an accident and try to get out of the tub and you don't want to put this on the bottoms of your feet because they'll be very slippery. Uh, so you just sort of put it on all over. I usually let it sit on for like 15, 20, 30 seconds and then I go ahead and rinse thoroughly. You do want to make sure you do rinse thoroughly because this is highly moisturizing and if you don't rinse off you could get like body acne or something or just it would not be good for your skin. So 
this is good stuff. I've been using the sort of moderate one. There was like a light one, a dry skin, and then a super dry skin. I got the regular dry skin one. And let me tell you, this bottle's already almost empty because I actually got my husband hooked on this as well. His skin has been super dry. It's just been like majorly, majorly dry, like not good. So this has been just amazing because our skin has been a little more hydrated. It's not perfect. Like we still have to put on lotion and stuff, but it's definitely better than it has been. Um, my other favorite of the month, I actually, I don't have it up here, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. The L'Occitane hand cream in the mango something. I think it's just mango. Um, that is such a good hand cream. I adore that. It feels great in the skin. It smells good and it absorbs quickly. I cannot stand greasy hand cream. So my next favorite of the month are some really amazing makeup brushes from the brand Furless. If you've never heard of Furless before, they are from Australia and they are a cruelty-free line. Um, none of their products are, you know, have animal testing or animal products in it. And all of their brushes are Furless. They are, you know, non-animal hair. They're synthetic. So they sent me a whole bunch of their new brushes, which is so sweet of them. In fact, I've used Furless in the, in the past. They're one of the first brands to ever like send me product when I was a baby YouTuber. Um, and I've always really appreciated that. They sent me like this whole brush line and I actually still use those brushes in my professional makeup kit. I really love them. And they're really fun electric, you know, blue handles and gold and they're very like cool. So they're kind of fun to bust out for the clients, um, which is why you don't see me use them here on YouTube very often because they're in my kit and I don't really like to mix things back and forth. But anyway, um, they were so nice to send me their whole line of their brushes and they are such good quality. I mean, I'm not even saying this because they sent it to me. If I didn't like it, I just wouldn't talk about it, frankly. Um, but these are, oh my God, they are so good. Some of them are super dense, like this one here, the CB4 is a super, super dense powder brush. I usually use this for like knocking down excess powder on my face because I do tend to prefer applying, a, like applying powder to my face with either a, like a brain fart. Um, <laughs> a powder puff or the next tool that I'm going to talk about after this, which I also love. Um, like I said, I have so many favorites this month that I feel so passionately about. The next favorite uh, brush from them is the CB2. This one is a little buffer foundation brush. I have, I'm not like the biggest fan of applying foundation with a brush. To be honest with you, my favorite way is with a beauty blender or a Real Techniques version of the beauty blender sponge or this one has its own name and I can't remember it, but uh, that's my favorite way to apply foundation. But occasionally I do like using a brush just to kind of, you know, polish my skills and make sure I'm up to speed on everything. And also to test out products for you guys, because I know a lot of you do prefer this. And this had me kind of like, am I changing my mind? Do I like this better? I do think that at the end of the day, this is my favorite way. But if this is dirty or whatever, this is definitely amazing at applying foundation. It, it buffs it into the skin beautifully. It works with both powder and cream. Really, or liquid. Cream, liquid, powder, whatever. Next brush is the CB3. This one is uh, like a buffing contour type brush. This is so good for contour. It is so good. It's so good. It's also really great at blush. A lot of contour brushes are not also good at blush. This one does both beautifully. It just gets right in there, applies it so, so... It's just easy. It's just like hitting the easy button. Previously, I really, really loved my Sigma. Um, I, I don't know the name of it, but it was a Sigma brush that I used for contouring, and I do still love that. But this one, you know, it's, it's, it's eh, I like it more, frankly. At the end of the day, you know, you just have favorite brushes, and sometimes you can't explain like a quantifiable reason. It's not scientific. It's just like I like this brush better. Also sent sent me another set, and these ones have shiny handles, and these ones have matte handles, and I believe this is the body contour kit. So the BC4 brush, this one is so amazing for applying highlight. Um, a lot of my highlighting type brushes are pointed, whereas this one has almost like a like a like a round stubby end in a way. It is nice and light though, so it does apply just the most perfect amount of highlight. It's gorgeous every single time. I love this. And then the other one is the CB3. This one I typically use to remove fallout from under the eye and I've used it for blush a couple times. Um, it's not, it's not actually, I would say not one of my favorites along with those, definitely the CB, uh, CB4 and also the CB2. This brush is really, really fantastic. Really great in knocking down excess powder um, or even applying a little bit of loose powder. This is a really great brush. So the furless brushes, I highly, highly recommend 
seriously, like, if you're looking for brushes, look no further than Furless. Um, and the Delium Tools one. You know, I feel like there's different brands that are better at different things. Like, Delium Tools, from my experience, is really good at, like, the teeny tiny brushes. In fact, I just got a couple more from them to try to check out the brand a little bit more. Furless, in my opinion, has got it cornered when it comes to really soft synthetic face brushes. So the second to last thing I want to share with you guys today is something that, again, I think I should do another video on and like go in a little more depth with it, and that is the Color Me. So this is a beauty tool that you use to apply either your liquid foundation or your powder foundation. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. When the PR company emailed me about this, I was like, I want no parts of that. That looks really, that looks really gimmicky and I want no parts of that. And I went to the makeup show back in August. I had an amazing opportunity to actually meet the creator of Color Me, which is Eric Jimenez. Hi, Eric. Just like so charismatic and fun. And he did a demo and I was like literally floored. I like jaw on the floor. No way. That's not real life. Like, what the hell? You just made yourself a flawless in like five seconds. Um, so what this is, it's, it's like a little electro vibrating thing uh, that there's like a little sponge that goes on top. I'm not going to go super in depth with this because I do want to make a, a more clear video about it. it. Vibrates. I don't even know if you can hear it. If we get it really close to the, <laughs> to the microphone, maybe you can hear it. Um, so the vibrating action helps to really settle this, the, you know, the powder into the face. I especially love this for powder. I have used it for foundation and I like it for that too, but I love it for powder. Love it for powder. In fact, I've already replaced my little sponge guys. I went ahead and picked up, um, this is the liquid foundation sponge. They also have the powder foundation sponge, which is fantastic. Now they just came out with a new pro version of this. So I think that maybe I will do a video comparing the two or just generally talking about it. Let me know your interest level with this because I'm super, super excited about it. And I feel like maybe I need to like explain it and do like a demo to really show you guys. Cause when you see how beautiful it makes the powder, you're going to be like, what the fuck? I need that. Things. The first one is again, something I got at the makeup show in San Francisco. This is the Isom Pro Detailing Buds. These are teeny, teeny, tiny cotton buds that are black. So they look a little more professional. You have them in your makeup kit. They look a little more professional than, you know, your, your standard issue Q-tips. And there you can see the size difference. This one's teeny, teeny, tiny. So it's so great at getting in and like getting rid of like eye boogies. Or if you make a mistake with your eyeliner, it's super easy to just clean it up without like re-wrecking it all over again. They are fantastic and they're only about four dollars i believe you're still with me i know this is like a really really long video so definitely in the comments section let me know if you actually watched this whole thing with the phrase puffer fish just kidding don't do that my next favorite of the month is from nars this is porto veneer this is a eyeshadow base that's kind of like a mac paint pot to me to be honest, it's more like a cross. It's, it's actually similar texturally to the MAC paints, but since that's like a really old product that not that many people buy anymore, and it's still not quite as thick as that, that's not maybe the best comparison, but it's sort of like a hybrid between a paint pot and a paint. If you're familiar with either of those products, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's an eyeshadow base. It's very, very pale. So for those of you out there who are a pale, pale, pale girl, and both soft ochre or painterly are just much too dark for your skin, this is a great alternative. The downside is it's more expensive if memory serves and you get less product, which is a bummer, but that's NARS for you. In any case, it's a really great eyeshadow base and I've been using it a lot. Um, not so much when I've been doing tutorials, but sort of like on a daily basis. I think for... <laughs> I think I've had this actually for a couple months now and I just typically will use it when I'm doing really light makeup, throw it on all over the lid, put some light colors on top of it and kind of go and not, not fuss too much about my makeup. That has been a definite go-to product for me for the last few months and I thought I would give it a little shout out. So then we finally have our mascara of the month and that is the Stretch X mascara. So uh, originally I was supposed to do this Clinique one about this early in the uh, early in the month in November and I thought oh I'm gonna make this my mascara of the month and then I bought the little set of the touch and soul mascaras one was paper pusher which is good stretch X is better <laughs> I don't know why I had to like sing songy that but 
Anyway, Stretch X is fantastic. It does such a great job of fanning out my lashes. Um, it gives a little bit of volume, not the most volume in the world, but with these tubing style mascaras, you tend to knock it tons and tons of volume. I still really like this and I don't, it's not like I'm like, oh, it doesn't have enough volume for me. It's fine. It's actually really great. The only thing about this that I don't actually like um, is that the wand itself is kind of spiky. It, have you ever experienced this when you're using a mascara and it kind of feels like you're applying it with like needles or something? They're just too spiky and it kind of just is unpleasant. Kind of just put up with it. I think that I actually will end up buying a full size of this because I like it that much. I also really like the way the tube looks with the sort of lime green and the navy. I think it's a cool color combo and um, I dig it. My favorite outfit is actually something I don't have here to show because I borrowed it from going to be and I already sent it back and as soon as I sent it back I was like I wish I had just bought that. So it's a beautiful top from Steady Chic and I love it. I wore it to the Glam Beauty 100 and it just made me feel like kind of badass and awesome when I wore it. My peach jacket, it was just like so chic. That was definitely one of my favorite outfits. That's sort of my fashion favorite of the month. And then my totally non-makeup favorite is the documentary Iris that's available on Netflix. I love Iris Apfel. I think she's fantastic. She's so stylish and she definitely has her own point of view with fashion and I really respect and admire that. And her jewelry collection is just to die for. So if you feel like watching in a very fun sort of low-key documentary about a really fantastic lady, check out Iris. My final not favorite, almost favorite and then like super not favorite. Per a perfume story. So when I was in New York back in August, um, I was staying at the Ace Hotel, which by the way is freaking amazing. And if I ever go back to New York, I hope and pray that I can stay there again because it was just the best. Um, one of the things I really liked is that the room was scented, which is something that was kind of cool. I had never experienced that before. So in the Ace Hotel, one of the businesses that was in the building was a Lalabo, which is like a high, very high end, um, like niche perfume company. So they had the room fragranced with one of their scents, but I didn't know which one it was. It was just like, hey, your room smells like whatever. And there was actually a card where you could go down to Lilabo and get a free spritz. I'm like, do they charge for spritzes? I don't know how that works, but whatever. I actually ended up taking them up on the offer because I was super, super busy the whole time. I was in New York, which, oh, by the way, on my vanity, I totally have this like picture thing that I took with the contest winner, Becky. So just so you know, girl, you're part of my vanity. I love this scent and I didn't know what it was. Like every time I would go into our room, I'd be like, oh my God, that smells so good. And um, when we came home, I brought home the little fragrance card and just like every now and then I just sniff it and be like, this is my favorite. This is like so good. This is one of the best things I've ever smelled in my whole life. A couple of weeks ago, we were out and about and I smelled this woman. I, not like intentionally. I didn't like walk up to her and be like, <laughs> but you know, I, I smelled a waft of this fragrance so I was like oh my god I have to ask this lady what she's wearing because I don't know what it is and I can get it so um she said oh it's Santal 33 from the Labo she's a little you know fancy pants about it I'm like oh cool because I you know I, I smelled this in New York and I couldn't remember the name so thank you so I went ahead and looked it up online I was like shocked at how much it cost I was like well maybe not so much and then I thought well maybe I'll ask for it for Christmas from Mikey because it's you know, it's not the kind of fragrance I'd buy myself. I mean, like the teeny tiny bottles of this thing are like 70 bucks. I would not necessarily, I would not just like go out and buy that. I'm sorry. I like my scent bird perfumes where they're cheap, but, um, you know, for something like this, it's super special and niche and it's just, it's a hard to describe scent. Um, kind of like a sweet cedar and sandalwood. And I know there's probably a million perfumes out there that smell like this, but this one just has this essence to it that was so special. So anyway, I decided to go ahead and purchase a tiny sample bottle of it first to try it out and see, you know, do I really want to ask for this for Christmas and get this little tiny bottle, you know? So I got the sample of it and I sprayed it on and I thought, oh my God, this is the best thing in the whole world. Just having this moment where I was like, this is the best perfume ever. I just kept smelling myself. I couldn't get enough. And then about three hours in, I started to develop the most horrific headache and I had to go scrub this off my skin the best I could but it lingered for days. Um, it actually took three shampoos to get it completely out of my hair. Uh, so it definitely lingers. If you like it and it doesn't give you a headache, it will last. But if you get headaches from perfumes like I do occasionally, this one does not one I can hang with. And it was such a bummer because I'm so in love with it, but it just, the smell, I can't, like it smells, like it still smells good to me, but oh, it's still, 
no, it's kind of reminding me when I had the headache and I just can't hang with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching my monthly favorites. I know it's like so much stuff. Oh my God. I am not looking forward to cleaning off my desk, but you know, what are you going to do? I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you. Bye.